trust in God. Question number three. Oh, okay, go, go ahead. Okay, and I also want to say also that um, this faith that we'll have in Jesus will also stem from the love that we have for Jesus. Amen. Amen. And Amen. Christ have that love for God, and he was able to endure it everything that he went through on earth because of that love and when we have that love for god it's gonna cause us to want to obey him to want to do what he asks us to do whether we agree with it or not we're gonna want to do it until we get our agreement in line with him amen so it's important to develop that love relationship with god by spending time in his word by seeing who he is as a person And developing that character so that we can reflect that character. And so we just fall in love with Christ. That when he asks us to do something, we just want to do it because we love him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's called a childlike faith, (laughs) childlike obedience. Obedience to the word of God. We are going to move on in the cosmic struggle. We're going to move on to what we call the ungodly chain. Again, I want to remind you, please, brethren, whoever you are listening to me, whoever you are who is listening to this program at this time, these are solid questions you may have. Please type it in the chat. One word, Sabbath School, to 855-997-1170. Or if you're on YouTube or the Facebook platform, type it in the chat, and we will answer your questions at a later date. Question three, Ella Walker. In Tuesday's lesson, it talks about the ungodly chain Describe this chain, this chain rather. And, you know, we have a reference to Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 to 9. And, of course, how can we stand faithful? Um, I guess I guess uh, uh, I want to start out again that we are using chain here uh, symbolically Sim- as well, Amen. just Amen. like how we have been studying Revelation as a symbolic. Yes. So when we're talking about a chain, a chain is made up of several links. Yes, right. yes sir. <laughs> and so if it says ungodly chain, it means that it's a series of events, ungodly events that will be used by this beast that we talked about earlier on yes, against yes. God's people. Yes. And, and, and this, this started out from way back then in, in, in Babylon when the people of God were in slavery. Yes. You know, it, 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 it has been the same dragon power that's using these, these political um, power to, 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 to put God's people under a lot of persecution and a lot yes. of trials and so on and and it continues afterwards even when even when they were um told to go back and rebuild when they go when when they went back they they faced a lot of a lot of a lot of uh, they had to even be building the wall with with sword in one hand and the word of God in the other. So they were going through some serious, some serious persecution as a result of of trying to to be obedient to God. And and it comes down that it talks about that they have they were placed into in in in, 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 into into this persecution for over twelve hundred and sixty years. Revelation talk about it as forty two forty two months. Months. And right. if, a, if a month is 30 days and you multiply that, you come back to the same 1260 years. Yes. So we can see that those that, that these chains of events have been taking place all the way down from the, all the different, from Babylon to Media Persia to Greece and down to Rome. Again, we talk about how the, 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 the dragon was wrought with the woman, yes. woman representing the church of God. Yes. And, well, and yep. she had to flee in the wilderness because the dragon was about to kill her. And we talk Talk about the dragon also want to kill the man child, which was Jesus Christ, who's the head of the church. Yes. So we can see all these chain of events are are ungodly acts against God's people. Yes, that the, that the dragon and the beast power has been fighting all uh, um, uh, uh, against. And then in the end, it says that in the latter days there's going to be a time of trouble that is the more than we yes, have sir. ever seen before, and he's going to get to the point where he is. Even going to unite this 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 uh, dragon power, uh, uh, this uh, this religious political power, unite together, and they are going to in, implement economic sanctions against the people of God. Yes. That if we don't have the mark of the beast, 
we will not be able to buy or sell, yeah. but there is hope for God's people Amen. because Praise God has always provided for his people. For go back to the wilderness days when they were out of food. God rained manna from heaven to feed them. He brought water out of the rocks. So God has always been a provider for his people. So even when that time comes around, he said, don't worry about what you're going to say or what, or what, or what you're going to do. Because the Holy Spirit will, will tell us what to say and what to do. And my God has never reneged on his promises. Praise and he said he will always be there for his people. So 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 these are the these are the, the, the ungodly chain that will be uh, will taking place. How do we how do we deal with this now? Yes, Galatians said that we gotta be steadfast. Amen. We can't give up. We said we gotta continue in good works. Yes. So even if we may lose our lives, we must be faithful to the God that we serve because He is the one who gives life and not just this life, but life eternal. Amen. So even if we lose this life, He still have life eternal for us Amen. if we remain faithful and true to Him, just like how the Barians and those in the past remained faithful and true. So the remnant of God need to remain faithful and true despite going through persecutions. Amen. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, the, the Bible states clearly, Jesus said before he, le he left this earth, he said, I will be with you always, even unto the end. I so regardless of what we go through, regardless of what temptation, what situation, what persecution, or even if we are killed, his word is clear, and he has said he will be with us. Amen. Amen. I want to add that, you know, it's a loving God who would say to his people and to mankind, look, these are the signs, these are warnings, because I love you. When he created earth, he told Adam, look, this is a tree, please don't eat from it. Yes. Because when you do, you surely will die. God wants us to trust him. Amen. And during the end time, we will be able to trust God because his promises never fail. Amen. Amen. So we don't need to be worried about how terrible it's going to be because God will put his seal upon us. Amen. A seal of protection. Amen. A seal of love. We have to do our part in being loyal to God Amen. and let Amen. God do the rest. Amen. We may find ourselves sometime in prison or yes. running in the mountains or comes what may, but look, we have history, men and women who went before us and they pulled through. Amen. They were steadfast. They were faithful. And in the end, God said, those who endure to the end, shall they're the saved. one who shall be saved Amen. and will get that reward. He's Amen. counting on us. And he wants all of us to be saved and take the warning. Amen. 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 You, you know, ladies and gentlemen, not only does God want us to take this warning seriously, he wants us to heed this warning with our very lives. Yes. He wants us to be so dedicated to him that we will not have regard for our lives. We will only have regard for the lives of others who we will try to inform to come and experience the love of Jesus. Sister Chung, I'm right back. I'm going, coming right back to you. Our next question comes to you, and it, it takes this format. But before I say that, please, I want to remind anyone who's listening, if you have any questions, we know this is a heavy topic, type it in the YouTube chat or your Facebook chat, type your questions in, and we will answer it at a later date. If you have a phone, Text one word, Sabbath School, to 855-997-1170. So our next question, Sister Chung says, states, what are the two main characteristics of God's last day people, and why are they important? And we have a... Okay. So we have always seen that there is always two distinct people that are on the face of the earth. Yes, yes. Those who follow God and those who do not follow God. Yes. There's no in-between. No. And those who follow God, they take on the characteristic of God. Yes. For the end-time people, 
they will have a special characteristic that will identify them because remember we're going to have the angel who will come and put a seal in just as how he did in Exodus yes. when he was supposed to put the plague down he said go and seal my people those yes. who have the the sign of the blood over the doorpost door who follow instruction of God they were the one who were saved Amen. so the two main characteristic of God's last day people are found in Revelation 14 verse 12 and it says here is the patient of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. These are people who endure persecution Amen. patiently, who are obedient to his commandments, and who maintain their faith in Jesus. Amen. Now, we are living in the end time. When we study Bible prophecy, we realize that we are at the toes. Yes. Right? And... In this toes come with different changes in, in culture. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So if Abraham was supposed to wake up, he will be surprised because it's totally different culture. <laughs> different culture. If, if um, mm -hmm. Mary was supposed to wake up, the mother of Jesus, she would be surprised because it's totally different culture. Right. We are living in what is called a postmodernism world. And every and everything is permissible. It can be challenging for a Christian to patiently endures persecution in our homes, in our schools, in our communities, and on the job. Yes, Some yes. of us may be ridiculed, asked, for, asked to defend our belief, mm -hmm. cut off from family members, put in prison, and finally death. But God is able to give us the strength we need to, stead, to be steadfast and to endure until the end. So one identifying mark is that of patience. And the Greek word is homophomia, which means steadfast endurance. Amen. So God is calling for our loyalty Amen. to him. Amen. And we can be loyal to our spouse. We can be loyal to our friends. We can be loyal to humans. And we know that humans are very changeable. How are we supposed to be loyal to a God who is unchangeable? Well, God gave us the instruction in his commandments. Yes, he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Keep my commandments. And all of us will go through this loyalty test at different stages of our lives. And based on our response, it will show if we really were convicted of God's words. Um, I think of people who are challenged to keep God's Sabbath. Now, some of us may hear the Sabbath message over and over again, and it never really clicked, <laughs> right? But there are others who are convicted, and we are struggling. What is it that we should do? Well, I implore you, do what God asks you to Amen. do. Amen. Because Amen. you are at that crossroad in making a very serious decision for Christ or not. Amen. So my encouragement for you is do what God asks and let him take care of whatever else will come because my God will never fail you, Amen. especially when you are standing up for him. Amen. Amen. The second identifying mark is in our worship. I would like to make a factual statement that there are many gods out there. Yes. Now, when somebody say they're going to pray to their God, it doesn't mean the God that you are thinking about. You have gods that people made and fashioned with their hands and bow down and worship them. Sure. You have God that people say have authority over the winds and the wave and they're considered superheroes. Well, the God I'm talking about is the God of heaven. Okay. He is the one who created all things and who have, ga who have given us his commandment and access to keep it. Well, this is as a mark. This God of heaven is inviting us to have a relationship with him by spending some time with him and by doing so on what he called the seventh day, Amen. which is the Sabbath. Amen. In Exodus 20, verse 8, it says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy and to be careful to keep it. Now, God wants us to stop working and to rest and to fellowship and to worship him on that day. He gave us this command. He also said that he blessed it. He sanctified it. He made it holy. He is the one that has the authority to do that 
for a particular day, and he did that for the seventh day. Now, yeah. when I'm following God's command and taking some time out to worship him and to rest from all my cares and labor, I am showing to the universe that I'm following the God of heaven Amen. because he had given us that instruction. Amen. Now, who do I want to follow? Do I want to follow my made-up belief and say, oh, no, I think I should worship on Monday? Do I want to follow my own theory and said, well, it doesn't really matter what day we should worship on. Mm. All days are good. No, my brothers and sisters, when we go against God's command, we are in defiance. We are in di disobedience, and we are doing things that we're not supposed to do, and we are not following God's way. And God wants us to be saved. He knows he's God. He created us. He knows what is best for us. We wouldn't put water in a gasoline car, would we? No. That's damage in the car. And God knows that when we work six days, seven days a week and do not take one day off, we're going to work ourselves to sickness. We're going to work ourselves to death. And God says, look, I know what is best for you. Trust me. Throughout history, throughout the Bible, the theme is, who will you trust? Amen. Who will you de believe? Who will you depend on? Look, Adam and Eve trusted someone else. And look what it is that taken us to. Mercy. What is played out in the earth right now. Yes. We have that example. We all will decide for ourselves who to trust and who to worship and who to believe. The God of heaven has given us evidence in his word, in nature. And he is imploring us to trust him Amen. because he loves us. He paid the, the ultimate price in sending Jesus to die for us, which is not a light thing. It's a big thing for God to leave all his heavenly host and his authority up there to come down to earth to save us. Do not waste that because earth history will come to an end and God wants us to be saved. Amen. Amen. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, there is a running thread that runs through this Sabbath school lesson. And the running thread is clear. God's word is steadfast. It's unmovable. God wants us to be clearly aware of his word. He wants us to clearly follow his word. Not only does he want us to follow this word, he said, I will be with you. I will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive it. But just in case you are being persecuted by this system, remember, I will never leave you. These are the words of God. So, as was ably pointed out by my panelists here this morning, we should not fear. There are things that we're going to struggle with. There's things in our personal lives that we will struggle with. But God has said in his word, he will be with us. So, not only that, he says, whosoever overcome it, I will grant to sit with me in my kingdom. So, this is the word of the Lord, ladies and gentlemen. Let us be very, very clear. Now, it's been pointed out to us that there will be persecutions. It has been pointed out to us that we should follow the Lamb of God wheresoever he goeth. And no matter what, the gates of hell cannot prevail. So let us take heart, ladies and gentlemen. Let us be careful to follow God's word. Go ahead. You see, I, I, another thing that I've, that I've noticed throughout this lesson is that there's going to be two sets of people. Yes. Right? And we're talking about the, the ungodly chain, and the final link in this chain is really the mark of the beast. Yes. 
Yes. That's what that's going to be the final uh, attack on God's people. And so it's going to be two set of people, those who wander after the beast yes. and those who follow the lamb wheresoever he may go. Yes. So we, it, it, we have to make a decision. Which one are we going to be on? Are we going to be on the side of those who, who wander after the beast and end up receiving his mark in our forehead or in our hands? Or are we going to follow the lamb, Jesus Christ, wherever he goes? Because he said, abide in me yes. and I in you. He said, we cannot, we cannot survive if, if the branch doesn't abide in the vine. It will not survive. If we don't abide in Christ, we cannot be able to withstand Amen. all these ungodly chain of events that the devil is unleashing on God's people. Amen. It is total abidance in God. And when we abide in him, he abides. He said, draw near to God and he will draw near to us. Resist is the devil and he will flee from us. Ladies and gentlemen, there's, there's a, a, another thought process that, that, that comes to mind. In the, the lesson it points out, it says when the time comes when we can never buy or sell, we should always trust in God. Amen. And this time is very, very soon. If you were looking at the current events, if you're watching the way the world economy is unfolding, if you, if you take a, a closer look at the digital system that is about to embark upon our, our, all the nations, it is not far from now when by the push of a button, one won't be able to buy or sell. It is very, very clear. And, and, and there's a point that, that um, was brought out. It says in the lesson, it says, the devil is preparing a professed, people who are professed Christians by compromising promises in their lives and they will eventually receive the mark of the beast. So we must be very, very careful to follow God's word. Any further? Okay. Yeah, and, and, and you know, I like that God put everything in the Bible for us to help us. When we look at Hebrew 11, the book of faith, mm -hmm. he shows the, the struggles that some of these believers had. So, you know, um, if they overcame we can also overcome. Amen. Amen. But Amen. they overcame by the blood of the Lamb yes. and by the word of his testimony, right? Um, they had shortcomings. They had fall. They had failures. But what did they do? They remember God. They stuck with it. They pressed on. They asked for forgiveness. And God was able to renew them and use them for our example. Let us look to them for our example and let us press on in our faith. Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of our Sabbath school lesson review. We are grateful to God for his mercies. We are grateful to God for his words. It couldn't be any clearer. However, just remember, if by chance you have any questions, put your questions in the chat, and we will respond at a later date. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, thank you for your words of wisdom. You're clear in your words, and we will follow you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Please protect us, inspire us, and give us childlike faith, the faith of Jesus, that we will endure unto the end. Thank you for your words of wisdom. Again, we ask and bless us this day in Jesus' name. Amen.